All right, so to, uh, to be able to calculate the percent dissociation, you're going to take percent of anything as part over whole. So you'll figure out how much of the hydrogen dissociates, and then you'll divide by the uh, molarity times 100, and that will give you the percent dissociation. So we have the molarity, but we have to figure out the, uh, basically what X is, because that'll tell you your hydrogen. So for A, I'm going to do this so y'all can see it better. So for A, we have um, the 1.00 molar acetic acid. Mm -hmm. So we'll do our rice table. Not rice that way. Rice this way. Okay. So this is... Uh, one molar, right? This is zero, zero, but basically, um, and then at equilibrium, it's x, x, and then one minus x. One molar is uh, really concentrated, so we're going to be able to uh, neglect x. We like that when we can do that, right? So this is going to end up being x squared over one minus x. <coughs> neglect. And then when we put in the 1.8, times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared over 1, which x is going to be equal to 0 0.0042. So that is equal to our hydrogen concentration. And so our percent dissociation is going to be the 0 0.0042 over 1 molar times 100. So we would have 0.42% dissociation. So that kind of gives you an idea of how weak, when we say there's very little dissociation, there's only 0.42% of it actually dissociates. I don't remember the X, whenever you said it equals like the concentration of hydrogen, does that also equal the concentration acetate. of acetate? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, it's just that we don't usually care what acetate is because that's not what gives us a pH, but it is the same. Yeah, it is the same. And because when we're talking about acids and they dissociate one hydrogen at a time, uh, we wouldn't do the whole double the concentration because we're going to, we, and you'll, you'll see this in a little bit, when we do a dissociation, we have to actually do separate rice tables for each hydrogen dissociating, which is fun. <laughs> okay. Um, and now for B, uh, same concept uh, for B because it's still a rice table. But now I'm just going to skip the rice table, but it's going to end up being negative 5 is equal to x squared over 0.1. We assumed we neglected x. So this time x equals being 0 0.0013. I'm not confusing anybody by what I'm just doing right here, am I? Okay. I'm just substituting the numbers we just wrote in to make our lives quicker. So now our percent dissociation, percent dis is 0 0.0013 divided by 0 0.1 times 100, and you get 1.3%. So you actually get, which is seems kind of strange, you actually get a higher dissociation for smaller molarities. Is that like a trend? Like it is a trend, okay. yeah. So the smaller the molarity? Usually the smaller molarity will give a higher per, uh, percent dissociation, which could possibly show up as a, like a, a multiple choice question to kind of know that. But you could, so like if you're doing these uh, really quickly on a multiple choice, don't bother doing out the rice table. You could go ahead and go straight to this because you know that's what it's going to come out to. On a, on a FRQ, do the rice table because they want, because sometimes that's where some of the points, okay. I Hopefully by now you've noticed that they don't ever just give you the point for like just here's the answer. They want to see the process. They want to know that you know the process. Okay, but on a multiple choice, do it the quick and easy way. Yeah. And if they were like to just give you like molarity values and so on, yeah. So let's say let's uh, let's say that we went to this problem and that, let's just pretend like this was a multiple choice yeah. question. A or B, which one would have a higher percent dissociation? You choose B because it's a smaller molarity, mm -hmm. and it's because you're dividing by the a smaller number. Yeah, you're dividing by a smaller number. So it's going to make your uh, percent dissociation be uh, higher. Yeah. 
Okay, so that is how you calculate percent dissociation, not too shabby. Um, here's one. Uh, this one is going to give you, the next one's going to give you your percent. Maybe it is because it's stuck. Uh, uh, uh. Stop working. Stop doing this. Oh, my gosh. Hold on, I have to pause. I'm having... Okay, Mackenzie, hello. We're having technical difficulties. I think my computer just crashed. Hi, Everybody say hi. 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 <laughs> so, the next one says calculating KA. This is exercise 14. So, we don't have our notes to follow on because the PowerPoint apparently just crashed. Uh, when we're done, I'll try turning off the computer and turning it back on and see if that works. So this one, um, problem 14, says lactic acid. Wait, can you record off of the Elmo? Uh, no, because it's through the Doceri program. And the, just, the Elmo is not connected to Doceri. Um, so we have lactic acid, and we have 0.1. So we have CHC3H5O3. So we're going to... Um, one hydrogen dissociates. So this is 0.1 molar. Zero, zero. And then minus x, plus x, plus x, just like normal. Okay. Um, so we know that our Ka is going to be equal to 0.1 uh, Oh. What am I doing? Sorry, looking at the wrong thing. So when we plug everything in, we got our percent dissociation. So we have x is over 0.1 is equal to 0 0.037 because they gave us that it was 3.7 percent dissociated, right? Is it x squared? No, no, no. This is the percent dissociation formula. Yeah, I would. I was going backwards. So if we were to, it gives us this. So we want to find this, right? So x would be equal to 0 0.0037. So now Ka, remember, is going to be x over x over 0.1 for the molarity that they gave us here. And then we plug it in. 0 0 0.0037. So you don't actually, that's a 7, not a bracket. And then Ka, when you throw all that into your trusty handy-dandy calculator, should be 1.36 times 10 to the negative 4. C, simple algebra, is your friend. Okay? I can leave it up for just a second. 20 seconds? Okay, we'll pause then. So, Actually, Mackenzie's probably still writing. No, she wouldn't do that. Now, moving on to the next example, which is the pH of a weak base. So that one says calculate the pH for 15 molar. We are for sure going to be able to neglect X with 15 molar. So we have NH3, and we're going to NH4+, plus because when it... At, uh, Dissociates in water, we're going to get that and hydroxide. So we have 15 molar. So 0, 0, minus x, plus x, plus x. So we have 15 minus x, x and x. Uh, for uh, ammonia, the Kb value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. It's going to be equal to NH4 plus OH minus... 15 minus x, neglect, remember we say it, and then, so then we'll have 1.8 times 10 to the negative, I'm sorry, I apologize, I will slow down, I have a bad habit of that, I apologize. Um, x squared over 15. So do your algebra dance and you get x is equal to 0 0.0164 molar 
which is equal to what concentration here? The OH. The OH, yes, that's equal to hydroxide concentration. <coughs> so if we take the negative log of the OH, which is going to be POH, right? That's going to give us 1.8. So then to get pH, we do 14 minus 1.8, and we get a pH of 12.2. So the only difference on these than the weak acids is you got to remember that when you take that negative log, you're getting a pOH. And I can't tell you actually how many kids forget that because they're, they're just going along and like, oh, I know how to do this. Take the negative log, bam. But it's the pOH when you get to this point. So you got to subtract. You've got to remember to subtract from 14. That's probably where a lot of uh, mistakes happen. Okay? Do you ever have to know, like, is there, like, a certain value of it? You just need to know your strong acids and your strong bases. Yeah, just know your, yeah, because if it's not one of the strongs, then you just assume it's weak. So you have your six strong acids, which are HCl, HNO3, HBr, HI, H2SO4, and HClO4. So if it's not one of those six, it's weak. And then if it's not a group one or two hydroxide, with the exception of beryllium and magnesium, then it's um, strong if it's one of those. If not, it's weak. Okay, And especially if they tell you something's in a base and you don't even see a hydroxide in there, then for sure it's a weak one. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's go on to the next one. I don't think we need to do exercise 16, same concept. So let's go to uh, calculating the pH of polyprotic acids. This is where I really wish you could see your notes on this slide. But if you look at that next section... It says, remember, I already told you this, that when you have polyprotic, they dissociate one hydrogen at a time. And so if you look at that example of phosphoric acid, and then look at the Ka values. You have Ka1, Ka2, Ka3, and what's happening to the exponent? It's getting no, it's actually getting smaller. Oh, yeah. yeah, negative. It's getting... Uh, exponentially a lot smaller value, okay? So usually with phosphoric acid, it's basically just the first dissociation that's going to contribute greatly to um, your pH, okay? And if you look at that chart, uh, you've got arsenic acid, carbonic acid, and they give you um, the subsequent Ka's. But look at sulfuric acid, okay? Sulfuric acid has a very large, it's the only one of the diprotic or polyprotic that's a strong acid, so, but even the Ka2 is still pretty significant. So sulfuric acid is an outlier when it comes to the diprotic, polyprotic thing, okay? Um, but we are going to, this one's going to take a while. <laughs> okay. So um, you're going to calculate, we're on exercise 17, okay? And we're going to calculate the pH of, uh, there it goes again. Gremlins. Okay. Uh, calculate the pH of a 5 molar H3PO4 solution and the equilibrium concentrations of the species, uh, all four of those. Fun. So write small. Okay, write small. Okay. So from our rice table for the first dissociation, because so we have 5 molar, I'm going to skip the rice table because I think at this point you know how to do the rice table, right? Yes. So we're going to skip that so it takes up less room. So from that, we're going to have 7.5 because that's our Ka value. Negative 3 is going to be equal to x squared over 5. We neglected x, okay, the minus x. So when I do my, my handy-dandy calculator, I'm going to get x is equal to 0.194 molar, which is equal to my hydrogen concentration. So to, yes? It should be 5 minus x, but we're neglecting it. Because it's, it's, remember, the whatever is on the uh, reactant side gets minused. What's on the product side gets 
added because since these are um, weak acids, the the um, equilibrium lies in favor of the reactant because since it's such little dissociates. So the equilibrium definitely relies, and you've got less than one for your K value, so it's also an indication that your reactants are what's favored. Okay, so because it's um, H3O4 and the pH is basically just going to come from that, we're going to take the negative log to get pH here. So we're going to take the negative log of 1.94. So let's, we're going to make us a little box over here and try to keep up with what we're doing. So pH, we find out, is going to be equal to 0.72 which is still very acidic in terms of pH, even though we don't really have that much H swimming around in there. Okay, so it's wanting to know these concentrations, H3PO4, H2PO4 minus, HPO4 uh, minus 2 or 2 minus, and then finally the PO4. So eventually we're going to have to find all of those, so let's keep track of them over here because it's fun. So I can get H3PO4 how? 5 minus X, right? So 5 minus point, uh, 0.194 is 4.8. Thank you. Okay, so we have that one. So now for our next dissociation, I'm going to change colors. We have H2PO4 will dissociate to HPO4 uh, 2 minus plus a hydrogen, right? And at this point, we know that we have 0.194 minus X is going to be its concentration. This is going to be 0, and this is going to be 0.19 plus X. Did that stump anybody? No. Okay. Because this 0.194 right here is coming from up here when it dissociated. So for the next dissociation, you still have that much hydrogen. Does that make sense now? So now I have to add however much I get on the second dissociation. Does that make sense? Okay. Good. I'm glad. So now what are we going to do? Set that equal to Ka. Set that equal to Ka. Um, do you think we're going to be able to neglect X here? No. Yes. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. It's, big. it's big. Yeah, it's pretty big molarity. So we're going to say, I should get out of the highlighter here. So we're going to, going to neglect X again because we've got a fairly high concentration. So then the K... And that's from that table. I'm not just making up this number. That table I just showed you. This, the Ka1 was this one right here. Okay. This is going to be Ka2 from the table, which is 6.2. Because I'm not putting it up. Yeah. Okay. So 6.2 to the negative, what is it, 8? is equal to 0.19, which is H, the HPO4, is it yeah, we're neglecting, divided by the 0.19, <coughs> so we do our little algebra dance, and that will give us that the HPO4 concentration is... 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. So we forgot to put 0.19 up here. And now we have 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8 molar. That's the K A, right? No, K A is right here. This equals... Yeah, but the, it's the same value. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. Is that always going to happen? Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it's just a coinky dink here. Okay. okay, so let's go to a third color. What color should I do? How about red? Okay, so now we can do Ka3 
ultimately is going to be H plus. PO4, 3 minus is what we're going to be looking for, and HPO4, 3, no, 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 2 minus. Okay? So, that means we can find our Ka value on the chart, which was 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13 is equal to 0.19 for my hydrogen. Because if I add this, it's not going to make a difference in the 0.19. Solving for PO4, 3 minus this time, divided by the value we just found for <clears throat> the HPO4, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. Where did you get the 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13? Okay, A3. There's like a chart. There's a chart. On the, like if you look on the previous page, there's the chart that has the Ka values on it. Okay, so now when I do my algebra dance, this is not chemistry, it's math. Is that what you're saying? So really, really small. I told you to write small. Heck, if I, as big as I write, if I could fit it all on one page. Okay, bam! Bam! <laughs> that's, I feel like that's a mic drop. Okay, next example is the H2SO4, where it says calculate the pH of one molar. So we have the H2SO4, right, going to HSO4 minus plus H plus. And that is a strong acid, so when it dissociates... What's it going to dissociate to? Strong acid, 100% dissociation, 1.0 molar, 1.0 molar. So if I take the pH of that, I mean 1.0, I get a pH of 0, but I'm not done. Okay? Because sulfuric acid, the second one is strong, it has a fairly high. Ka value, so we need to do the second dissociation. I really don't have any idea what you just said. Well, I mean, I did a rice table. I just the change is 100% dissociation. Oh, uh, would give you a wrong number. Yeah. Yeah. So, on this case, this is what you need to do here. Now you're going to do minus x plus x plus x. And then you take your Ka, which is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. Throw in our 1. Throw in our x. Throw in our 1. Again, neglecting x because 1 is high. So you get x is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. So now in order to get your total hydrogen concentration after both dissociations, you're going to take the 1 from up here, 1 plus 0.012. So now your hydrogen concentration is 1 point... Oop. 012. Now take the negative log of that. I don't have a calculator handy, so someone do that for me. So you get what? Okay. So it's still zero, but you have to show that because it has higher. Okay. I think that means I'm going to. In order, to, in order to finish the notes so that y'all can do your homework, I'm going to go to um, the so property of salts. And I'm just going to have to walk you through this one, okay? Because I, I don't know what's going on with my PowerPoint. So if you look at the acid-base pro acid -based properties of salts, remember when acids and bases react together, you get an ionic salt and water, okay? If it is a strong, strong, strong acid, strong base, so we say strong acid plus strong base, 
it's going to yield neutral salt and water. They're all going to have water, neutral salt. Okay. The easiest way to do this, and you can walk through this, but the easy way to do this, and this is what you're going to do on your worksheet too, if it's a strong acid plus a weak base, what kind of salt would you expect? An acidic salt. Okay. What if it's a weak acid plus a strong base? Basic. It's so basic. Basic salt. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. It's just because I'm not using this, and so it's saying. It's because, it's, yeah. Uh huh. You kind of it well if you were to look at the next um, because remember when we're talking about dissociation when it's lower you get more dissociation so the next example in 19 it does make a difference okay so if you go back and work example 19 it will actually change your pH a little bit because you have more of a dissociation and um, right now in 19 because it's 0.01 molar you can't neglect X on example 19. So I want you all to try example 19 on your own. But didn't uh, that last one like, dissociate as much as possible? Didn't make a difference? Yes. So what I'm telling you is at higher concentrations, it doesn't matter. But at lower ones, the second hydrogen does matter. Yeah. Okay. Now, what about if you have weak and weak? Yeah. No, it's not. Look at your Ka value versus your Kb value. Okay? Whichever is higher will make it acidic or basic. So if Kb is higher, it would be basic. If Ka is higher, it would be acidic salt. Okay? Because strong, they're 100% disso dissociation, so it's a one-to-one. One one. So they'd make it neutral. Yeah. So most acid-base reactions actually don't make a neutral salt. We're just used to the, the main, you know, the main ones. How do you know if there's a strong base again? Uh, group 1 and 2 hydroxides with the exception of magnesium and beryllium. So like the calcium? So calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, all of your group 1 hydroxides are strong. Okay. Wait, they have to be a hydroxide with it? A hydroxide, yes. Okay. Or oxides, like a sodium okay. oxide, because when you react sodium oxide or any metallic oxide, it becomes a metallic hydroxide. Okay? okay? So, like, on the worksheet, like, the example, like, if salt is KCL, is that Okay, so, yes, that's, let's do a couple of examples, yeah. okay? So, what you have to look at, it's like, if I told you the salt, let's, the salt is KCL. You have to decide where did it come from. Yeah. So this came from KOH. That came from HCl. Okay. Those are both strong, so this one would be neutral. Mm. Did I spell neutral wrong? No. Okay. What about this one? What if I have sodium acetate? That's going to come from NaOH. That's going to come from acetic acid, strong base, weak acid, basic salt. See how that works? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to do another one? Yes. Okay. Copper, copper two or copper one? It doesn't matter. Either one, and we work the same. So we assume that this is coming from copper hydroxide. We assume that this is coming from HNO3. That does not look like a, it looks like HMO3. Okay? Weak base, because copper is not a group one or two. Strong acid, so it would be an acidic salt. Does that help? Okay. All right. Then, the end. Everybody say bye to McKenzie.